oh God. You are worthy, oh God. You are worthy, oh God. You are worthy, oh God. Worship fits you perfectly. Worship fits you perfectly. Receba shante rebosaya. Recoze parikatea. E sharana maseke rebosaya. E reso rimakaya. E rabazaka paradea. E repreketoria. Serana Mashanda, a Rafa Soparicataya, a Shante Seca Pariacaya, a Recosi Pericataya. Oh, God, you praise him. You are the God of all God. You are the God of all God. You are the King of all kings. You are exalted above everything. You are exalted above everyone. Everything is under you. We praise you. We worship you. We adore you. We give you praise. We give you worship. Oh God of all God. Oh King of all kings. Receive our worship. Receive our praise. Receive it, oh God. Receive it, oh God. Receive our worship, oh God. Receive our worship, oh God. Sharama se preketia kande mosaya. Reso preshe kataya. Reko se mashande mosira na ha. belongs to you. Our worship belongs to you. Our worship belongs to you. You deserve it, oh God. You deserve it, oh God. You deserve it, oh God. You are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our worship.
Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter number 1 and from verse number 28 and God blessed them maybe we can read the entire verse the Bible says God blessed them and said to them be fruitful and increase in number fill the earth and subdue it rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground one of the things that brings a mega difference in the lives of people is the power of the blessing. The first thing that God did after creating Adam and Eve is blessing them. And when God begins with something, whatever God begins with, it means it is very critical. The blessing was very critical in the lives of Adam and Eve. And this is the very first thing that he did. He blessed them. If your life and my life will be different from the rest, and we will make impact in our generation. One thing that will make it happen is the power of the blessing. It is the blessing that was to bring fruitfulness in their lives. It was the blessing that was to birth increase it was the blessing that was to help them to subdue the earth. It was the blessing that was supposed to help them to rule. And that is why God began with blessing them. If we will have impact in life, we will have it because the blessing of God is of our lives. And I want us to pray today that we are asking God to cover us, to cover our lives, to cover our families, to cover this ministry with his blessing. The difference maker, the one that causes men to be fruitful and to increase and to subdue and to rule. It is that blessing that we are asking the Lord to cover our lives, our families, and this ministry with. Please open up your mouth and ask the Lord to cover your life with his blessing, to cover your family with his blessing to cover our church with his blessing. It is only through the blessing that you can be fruitful, that you can increase, that you can subdue, and that you can rule according to Genesis 1.26. Lift up your voice and ask the Lord to cover you.
ministry, bath increase in this ministry, cause this ministry to excel beyond the imaginations of men in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you because you are the blesser of men. You are the blesser of ministries. We pray, let your blessing envelop our families our lives, our church, that a difference may be noted by everybody that this is the doing of the Lord. We thank you, Father. We pray that even as we continue with the service, let your presence envelop us, O God. And let your word as we hear it, let it bring a lasting change. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Everybody shout a big amen. amen. Let us celebrate the Lord with a hand in the mighty name of Jesus. It is the blessing that causes men to excel. It is the blessing that causes men to be fruitful and even to increase and to subdue their by the power of the blessing. Let's celebrate the worship team as they get back to their feet in the name of Jesus. 
I allow you to take your seats in the presence of the Lord. In Jesus' name. I want to take this opportunity to welcome each one of you that are on ground and you that are joining us online to this, our Tuesday empowerment service where we come and we are empowered to be able to fulfill our great destinies because we must fulfill them. I thank God for gathering us again in this house for the service today. And I am believing that as we hear the word of God, something will be born in our spirits that will bring a change that will be a blessing to each one of us and to our great destinies. I want to bring us a message this afternoon that I've titled The Five D's of Success in Life. The five D's of success in life. Let me first ask ourselves, why should we succeed in life? Because we have spoken about success many times in this house, but the question is, why should you succeed in life? Number one, it is because your success brings glory and honor to God. When you succeed in life, you bring glory and honor to God. Number two, because your success draws people to God. When you succeed by the help of God and people see your success, that success has the ability of drawing people to God. Number three, why you should succeed in life. Because your success is a proof of God's faithfulness. Your success in life is a proof of God's faithfulness. And number four, because your success brings gain into the kingdom of God and losses into the kingdom of Satan. You see people are writing notes. Very important. And number five, why you should succeed is because it advances the kingdom of God. Your success advances the kingdom of God. So now, having known why we sh you should succeed or why we should succeed, then we enter into these deeds that give birth to success in life. D number one is what we call decision. Decision, decision. And I want us to read from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse number 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 19, it says, I call heaven and earth as witness today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live. Let me begin by saying this is a 
a verse that is talking about making a decision or making a choice. And the Bible is saying that there is a blessing and there is a curse. And you are supposed to choose the one that you want. You are supposed to make a decision. And after you make the decision, then the Bible is saying, therefore, choose life. It is even helping you to make a decision. Why? So that you and your descendants may live. And I want you to understand that it is decisions that determines destiny. Every time you make a decision, you are determining your end. You are determining where you are headed. You are determining your destiny. And one thing about making decisions is that decisions will do two things. Decisions will either make you or break you. They will do two things. They will either make you or break you. In this verse, it's saying there is a curse and there is a blessing. When you, that decision that you are making, it will either bring a blessing or bring a curse. So, every decision you make either makes you or breaks you. I'll say something that I've said here before. What you are today is because of the decisions that you made yesterday. And what you will be tomorrow, it will be because of the decisions that you are going to make today. And to attain success in life, you must reach a point that you must make a decision. You must decide that I must succeed. And make decisions that will help you to succeed and become what God wants you to be. And one of the decisions as believers we must make is the decision to be serious with God. I will say that again. One of the major decisions that we must make make is to be serious with God. You know, we are talking about the five Ds that bad success. And you must understand that God is the giver of success. God is the source of success. If you are not serious with him, the source of success, you can never access success. So the first major decision that every believer must make is the decision to be serious with God. Make a decision to be serious in prayer. Make a decision to be prayerful. Make a decision to be committed to God. Make a decision to be committed to kingdom service. These are the kinds of decisions that will bring success in your life. God is the giver of success. If you are going to have it, then you must be serious with God. That decision of seriousness with God is very crucial to your success. I can dwell on this the entire of this service. But I want you to understand your decision determines your destiny. Your decisions determines what happens to you tomorrow. Please look at your neighbor and say, tell them the way you are is because of the decisions that you made yesterday. And there are many decisions. There are people who are poor today because they made bad financial decisions yesterday. They squandered their money yesterday. Now they have nothing. You are poor today because of what you did yesterday. The decisions that you made yesterday. So D number one is the D 
of decision. D number two is the D of desire. 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 Let me say this. You will never succeed in life unless you have a burning desire to succeed. I'll say that again. You cannot succeed in life unless you have a burning desire to succeed. Those people that are, that, that are having a burning desire to succeed are the ones that succeed. You know, those people that are hungry for success, those people that are thirsty for success, those people that have a burning desire that I must succeed are the people that succeed. So for you to succeed, you must have a passion. You must have a thirst. You must have a hunger for success. You know, I was reading from the book of Genesis chapter number 11. If you read from verse, maybe we can read verse 4, verse 5, and verse number 6. Genesis chapter 11. It says, And they said, Come let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. And this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. These are people that had a desire. Their desire was to build the tower and, 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 and go and meet God, see where God stays. And they had a desire. And because of the desire, they were unstoppable. One of the things that caused them to be unstoppable is the desire they had. Even before their unity came because of their desire. They had desired with all their heart to build a tower that reaches the heavens. If you don't have a desire of succeeding, please don't expect to succeed. Desire is what makes people start. And, and, and I will say this, that when you have desire... You have started the journey of success. In other words, the journey of success begins with a desire. These people desired, we want to build a tower of Babel that we may make a name for ourselves. Of course, that was not right, but they had a desire. So how bad do you want to succeed? How hungry are you for success? How passionate, how thirsty are you for success? How bad do you want to succeed in life? Then you, this is what I'm calling desire. So I'll say this to you, that any success begins with a burning desire. Please, if you are writing notes, write that down. In every success begins with a burning desire. In other words, desire is the starting point of the journey to success. You, you know, when you have the desire, then you can begin. And that is why you see God saying in the, in the book of Psalm 37... As uh, the, the psalm is saying in, in Psalm 37 verse 4, that God fulfills the desires of your heart. If you don't have a desire, there is nothing God can fulfill. This is the one. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. 
So your success begins with a desire. When you have a desire. But not every kind of desire. Please know this. Your desire must be in line with the word of God. Those are the desires that God fulfills for his people. D number three is what we call determination. Determination. There is a scripture because we don't just want, uh, we, might, we might be talking about philosophy, but it's very important that we, we have the word of God that is supporting what we are teaching tonight. Job 14.14 14 says, Please put it up, Job 14, 14. It says, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my heart service. Now hear this. I will wait till my change comes. You know what determination is? Is the ability to wait. No matter how long it takes. Determination is the ability to wait. No matter how long it takes. And Job is saying, I am determined. I will wait until my change comes. You have to be determined to succeed. No matter how long it will take. You are determined to wait until success comes, you will be determined. You will do everything possible to make sure that your success has come. And determination is what separates failure from success. Because there are people who are not determined. That when they fail once, they give up. But there are others who are very determined. And this is what makes the difference. Your determination makes the difference between your failure and your success. And I am praying for you that God will give you the grace to be determined so that you can be able to succeed in life. And I will tell you this, nothing great in this life have ever been achieved without determination. Determination is what causes great things to happen. I'll give you another scripture. Genesis chapter number 26, when you read from verse number 12 all the way to 22, there are many verses, but this is Isaac. Isaac he is digging one well. And then the enemy, the Philistines, are coming and striving with him. He goes to another well. Yeah, it is this, but you, you can read from verse 12 all the way to 22. It's talking about until when he reached Rehoboth. There were other wells that he dug. And then there was a battle between him and the Philistines. And he moved from that first well. And he dug another one. And when there was also trouble with the second well, he moved on. He was a determined man. That no matter the opposition, no matter the battles he faced, he was determined. That the opposition would not stop him. He kept on digging. Look at your neighbor and say, keep on digging. You know, if he had stopped after the quarrel of the first well, he would not have gotten his rehoboth. You know, there are people here, you have stopped because the opposition has come and taken your first well. And now you have stopped. But Isaac did not stop. He went to another well. Even when there was trouble with that well, he did not stop. He was determined that there is a time that God will give him success. And when he dug the last one, 
he called it Rehoboth. It is your determination that keeps you energized to move on. Is anybody being taught in this house? And, and I, will, I, will, I will let you know, uh, when we are talking about determination, it is a product of three elements. Determination is always a product of three elements. Number one is what we call the goal. Element number one is the goal. Number two is the commitment. And number three is the focus. That is what, that is what determination consists of. A goal, a commitment, and a focus. That I must reach that goal. I will be committed. I will be focused until it happens. I'll finish this point by saying when determination is not in place, success is not guaranteed. When determination is not in place, then success is not guaranteed. Number 4D is what we call discipline. Discipline. So what is discipline? Discipline, simple definition. It is the art of doing what is required. Discipline is the art of doing what is required. Let me, let me try to water it down, uh, not water it down, to wait a water, to kohuda hudia, to go to a kura. Let's, let's, let's to a kura. Uh, when we are talking about discipline, discipline helps you to do what you ought to do, not what you want to do. Maybe I can go again on that. Discipline helps you to do what you ought to do and not what you want to do. Because there is what you ought to do. And sometimes there is what you want to do. And let me say this. Only the discipline in life succeeds. I'll say that again. Only people who are disciplined succeed in life. And I'm saying to all of us, because this is a teaching, you must be disciplined in your words. Be disciplined in your actions. Be disciplined in your behaviors. And also be disciplined in your dressings. Very important. These are the, the, you know, if you are not disciplined in your words, then there are places you can never arrive at. If you are not disciplined in your actions and in your behaviors, you may see success from afar, but you will never get there. Let me say this to you. Discipline is the bridge between your goal and the achievement of that goal. You must remain disciplined so that you can move from the goal to the achievement of that goal. Okay, the way people are looking at me, Please look at your neighbor and say, the price of success is discipline. 
nikirito ire githomo kirito ire na niguo kiendaga kiendaga o kiendaga oguo the price of success is discipline like when i am doing ministry i am very very disciplined very disciplined because i know if i lack discipline then i will be seeing success in view sasa the same case with you discipline is very important why because it is discipline that keeps you on the track to your success you cannot be doing everything and ex expect success to to come to you you must be disciplined and that is why we are seeing people like joseph he could ascend to the throne because he was a disciplined man but when you look at samson he aborted his mission and his destiny because he was not disciplined i pray that god will help you to be disciplined May God give you grace to be disciplined in Jesus name. Okay, number 5. And let me not stay there with the discipline so much because somebody is looking at me with yesterday's eye and I want today's and tomorrow's eye. So number 5 is what we I call desperation whereby you are desperate and you know if if i if i uh, if i can maybe define this word desperation desperation is a state of willingness to pay any price to make it happen when we come to church is the willingness to pay any price to cause god to show up the willingness to pay any price for god to show up you know the bible says in is it mark chapter 10 from verse number 46 a man who was desperate for his miracle batimaeus the bride batimaeus jesus had come to jericho and there is a man here that was so desperate that he could do anything to attract or to make god to show up for him So for you to have success you must be desperate for that success. And you must ignore every other voice, contrary voice, every other negative voice. You know, but Timaeus is crying and people are shutting him up, but he is desperate. Look at your neighbor and say I am desperate for my success. When you are desperate you are unstoppable. they tried to shut him up some were putting their hands on his mouth but he kept on shouting jesus son of david have mercy on me you must be willing to pay the price to cause god to show up in your life and this is what he did he was desperate look at the other woman in the book of first samuel chapter number 1 by the name of Hannah she is a desperate woman even when you read from verse number 2 even Ari the priest thinks that she is drunk and it happened as she continued praying before the lord that Ari watched her mouth verse 13 now Hannah spoke in her heart only her lips moved but the voice was not heard Therefore Ari though she was drunk what was happening it was the prayer of a desperate woman she needed a baby 
she needed success in her marriage. And therefore, she was desperate. And when you are desperate, people may not understand you. But when you are desperate, you are paying the price to make God show up in your behalf. Do we have people who are desperate that I must succeed? I must go to the next level. I must make progress. I must become better in my Christianity. They are desperate. We also see that other woman in Mark chapter, is that Mark chapter 5 from verse number 25? The woman with the issue of blood. She was desperate for her healing. And she could do anything. She was even crawling between the legs of Peter and John. Headed for her miracle. Why? She was desperate. So when people are desperate, it means they are willing to pay the price for the change to happen. They are willing to pay the price to access success in their lives. I pray that God will help you to be desperate for success so that you'll be willing to pay the price that is required for that success. You know, so people just want to pray and God give us success, give us success. It is more than that. I will tell you, you will pray until the cows come home and you still be where you were when you began the prayers. You must pray and be desperate enough and start doing something and God will bless what the works of your hand and you will end up with success. And I am seeing all of us succeeding as we embrace making the right decisions, having desire for success, being determined, being disciplined, and being desperate, then there is a God in heaven who is the source of success. He will cause each one of us to succeed in life. Please look at your neighbor and say, you will succeed when you embrace these deeds of success. I believe that somebody has heard from God. No matter where you are, there is another level that you can go to. No matter the success you have today, there is more success that you can still achieve. You know, like I've been praying this whole week, from last week, I am desperate for the move of God in this ministry. And I am doing everything that I can. I have the desire to see this ministry go to the next level. I have decided to do everything that I can to see us go to the next level. I am determined to make it happen by prayer, by fasting, by whatsoever means, because we must. And I changed my prayer, and I was telling God, now bless me for the ministry. Increase me because of the ministry. Lift me because of the ministry. Anoint me because of the ministry. Not because of myself, because of his work. You must reach a point, you remove yourself from the equation and you bring God into the equation. And this is what happened with, with Hannah. 
You know, Hannah, every time, give me a child. Twelve, what, the first year, father, give me a child. He goes to Shiro, give me a child, give me a child. On the twelfth year, according to the Bible history, on the twelfth year, she changed her prayer. And she said, give me a child. And when you give me the child, I'll give him back to you. Change the equation. In other words, Hannah was telling God, please bless me for you. Because God needed the prophet. Hannah needed the child. She's saying, now I have changed my prayer. For all these years, I wanted the child for myself. Now give me a child for you. If you are crying for God to bless you so that you can show off, then there is a problem. If you can ask God to bless you for him, that when you are blessed, you will become a blessing to the kingdom. When you are prosper, when you are, God prospers you, you will also prosper his work. Then God has no problem. You know, the problem God has is because you are selfish. If you can change the prayer, God can do it for you. You know why God has no problem in giving me money? He has no problem. I don't know whether I told you this. God has no problem giving. Money comes from all directions. Because God has no problem in giving me money. Because God knows if he requires it, I'll give it. I'll give it. But the problem with some of you is that when God gives you money, it is yours alone. It is yours and yours alone. But if God knew he gives you a vehicle, that vehicle belongs to you and him, he will give it to you. One day I told God, from today, God, when you have no money and I have money, you have money. But when I don't have money and you have money, I have money. There is no demarcation. There is no line between my money and God's money. I can give him everything I have. And that is why God has no problem in giving me money. And you will see me swimming in money all through my life. Why? Because God has no problem with giving me money. Because I also don't have a problem in giving him money. No, ogekinya hado atwe do rekido tagi ne gai na ke gai go tirekido atagi kone. And that is what happened. That is how God works. If you can give him, he will give it to you. Hannah, if because you have changed the prayer, now, when you go back to Rama, go conceive. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for speaking to us tonight. We pray, Father, that you shall help us to make the right decisions that will bring success into our lives. And even to desire the kind of success that you have planned for each one of us. And help us that our desires will be in accordance to your will, in line with your word. Help us to be determined to succeed in life. Help each one of us to be disciplined as we walk the journey to our success. And help us to be desperate for that success. We thank you, Father, 
and we worship your name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Everybody shout a big amen. Let's put our hands together for the God that gives us success. He is the success giver. If you will succeed in this life, it will take him. He is the source of all genuine success. May you go and succeed in life. Go and succeed in your families. Succeed in the businesses. Succeed in your jobs. And in everything that you are involved in. In Jesus' name. Again, let's put our hands together for God. Worship God with our substances. So please prepare your offering, prepare your tithe, prepare your seed in the name of Jesus so that we may be able to worship God with our money. appearing on the screen in case you want to use the Empesa, you can use it. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for giving us this opportunity to give it to your King. As we do it, dear Father, let it return a thousand Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. So I know we will do it on Sunday, but I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you that give generously towards uh, that uh, project that we have of buying land for the church. My wife is not sleeping well because she is jumping up and down with happiness that uh, the people give generously. And you know, sometimes she is so much on it and she is thinking.